Hi everybody, today we're going to talk about mainsprings. Um, we're going to talk about two different types of mainsprings today. Um, they are known as the hole end and the loop end mainsprings. There are the more two. There are the two more common versions of mainsprings that you'll find inside of a clock. Today I'm going to go over on how to use a mainspring winder to loosen them, to and then how to lubricate them and get the one back inside of barrels, which are the um, hole end mainsprings. Okay, so pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here we have a main spring winder. Um, this is used for removing springs from arbors like this or out of barrels like this. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do that. The first one we're going to talk about is what's known as a loop end main spring. Um, they're, they get their names for exactly the reasons you might think. They have a loop on the back end of the main spring that if you've ever seen an American style clock, that's what these use most more often than not. Uh, they're usually attached to one of the posts between that hold the two plates together. It's one of the strongest points, so it makes sense to have it mounted there. So anyhow, uh, what we need to do is we need to loosen this. We've gotten this out of the movement, and what we need to do now is open it up safely, and then we're gonna lubricate it, and then eventually it will go back inside the movement. I will not show you that today. But this is just strictly how to uh, do the mainspring part of stuff, okay? So to start with, um, actually let's go ahead and move on to the mainspring winder real quick again. This one here is an Ollie Baker style mainspring winder. They're a little pricey, but I think it's the best one out there, at least the best one for me. I feel it's safer and it's just as fast as any other method in my opinion that you could possibly use. Okay? Alright, so let's go ahead and get this one loosened up. Okay, here we are at the main spring winder. Um, so we're going to go ahead and loosen this one up. Now to do that, uh, you actually need uh, another set of tools to help. Uh, it's actually a pretty neat feature with this. So you're here you have your typical let down tool, uh, which you would use for letting down the tension of a spring when it's inside of a movement, okay? Most of these have interchangeable ends on them, okay? And they just pop out like that, right? What's interesting about this mainspring winder is you don't need any special ends for this except for these. So if you already have this, you're good to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the number six end, which I already have in my hand here, and we're going to slide that into here. It fits nice and snug. And then we're going to use the tail stock for this one. I'm going to go ahead and pull this off of here and show you. So there's a post sticking off of here, okay? This is what we're going to attach the mainspring to, okay? Like that. And then we're going to use this divot to put your uh, back half of your arbor in, like that. Okay, so it's gonna sit like that. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get that on here. And then we're gonna take this end and we're gonna put it inside of the key or the letdown key. And we're gonna tighten this up. It doesn't need to be real tight. It can have some play. There's nothing wrong with that. Just so long as it's inside of that chamfered divot, okay? So now what we gotta do is we gotta wind it up. So we're gonna be going this way. So I'm gonna have to actually flip this the other way, okay? There's this right here. You can move it back and forth to go the direction you need to go. So I need to actually wind this towards me. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna wind it up tight and then we're gonna take off this, uh, this clamp, okay? All right, we don't need to wind it up all the way. All we need to do is get it loose enough to be able to take that off of there. Okay, like that. Now all we have to do is just make it go the other direction. There we go. And presto, 
the spring is now let all the way down. There's no more tension on it. Now all you have to do from here is simply undo the tailstock, grab a hold of the, the end of the spring, the loop end, and pull that off of there. You don't even have to pull this all the way off if you don't want to. Now, if you want to get the spring off of the arbor, in the direction you're already going to loosen the spring, go ahead and grab a hold of your spring. It's best to use a glove for this. Um, let me go ahead because this spring is really dirty. I'm going to go ahead and grab it with this old sock. And you're going to turn it past it, and you're going to feel it make a slip. Or at least it should. There, like that. Okay? Now we've got it off the arbor. A lot of times it will do this. I don't know if you can see it, but it kind of deforms the end. This spring, I don't even care if it happens to. But if you want to fix that, just use your needle nose pliers. Grab a hold of the loop in there, and then you're just going to curl it back around. Sometimes it's a bit of a pain. It's a lot of times easier to do this when it's already wound up, which you can help get started because you've already got that space in there to put your end in, uh, inside the hole on the inside there, okay? Now, this spring um, is absolutely garbage. I'm actually just going to throw this one out uh, whenever we're done. But I'm going to go ahead and put it back. And then here's what the inside of your arbor looks like. You'll see there's a pin in there. This is actually not a good design in my opinion, but it works. So, But we'll go ahead and put it back. So we're going to stick this in here, back in its little divot there. Now sometimes you do have to fiddle with these to get them to work properly. All right. So then we'll go ahead and put that back in there. Put our tailstock back on. We'll loop this back around the other way so that we can reattach it to our arbor there, our holding post. Okay, now we're going to make it go the correct direction, which is the opposite of that. It's a little too tight there. There we go. Now we're lining it up. It's a good idea to kind of back yourself away from it a little bit stuff like that can happen. See? So now, let's go ahead and inspect and see what happened here. My guess is, is it came out of the hole. Yes, that's exactly what happened. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to grab a hold of here, recurve that so there's a little more space in there. This way. That's better. Alright, let's try it again. Okay. Okay, presto, we have it back tight again. We're going to go ahead and take our C clamp, what I call it, just a C clamp, but basically a mainspring clamp. Put that back on there. I'm not going to lubricate this one because the spring is garbage and I'm not wasting good lubricant for that. I do have another one though. Uh, the same process for lubricating works for both the loop end and the whole end mainsprings that go inside the barrels, okay? And I'll show you that way. So now we're going to go ahead and let the tension off again. And what I like to do is just kind of hold that on there so it doesn't fly all over the place. Like that. Okay. And there we have it. Back on there. It's not coming off. All right. So there's the loop end mainspring. Okay, so now we've talked about loop end mainsprings. Now let's talk about whole end mainsprings. Now whole end mainsprings usually live inside barrels like this one. So a lot of times you look at these, especially if you're new to clockwork at all, and you wonder to yourself, how on earth do you get that spring in there? I'm going to show you exactly how to get that spring in there. All right. Um, also, when taking these mainsprings out, you want to mark 
first of all, what side or what train the spring came from. This one just happens to already be marked with an S for strike. Now, this came from a Westminster Chime movement, and if you know anything about Westminster Chime movements, most of them, like 90% of them, have three main springs, okay? One of them's going to be for your time, strike, and then some people use different terminology for it, but I call it the melody train. So I use S, T, and M for those designations, okay, just to help me remember. Also, a lot of times these barrels aren't perfectly round, and when you go to put these covers back on, it's a good idea to put it back exactly the same way you took it off, okay? So what I do is I use a scribe, like this one here, and then you take where this is, and you mark yourself a line, okay? Nice heavy mark on there so you know where that was located on there, okay? You could also use a Sharpie if you really felt um, uh, doing it that way. Um, you know, we can also just use a Sharpie like this. Plus you can see that better too, I think. All right, so now we know where that was located. So now we know how to get this off of here. Now, to get this off, there's a couple of ways to do it. One way is you can just kind of hold it in your hand and then give this a sharp whack with a hammer like that. But another way that I found that works really well is to use a vise. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, here we have our little uh, clamp-on vise right here. You'll need the back part here that you use for basically peening stuff against or what have you. It's usually soft enough that it won't hurt anything. So then we'll take our spring with the barrel and just give it a good sharp whack on there like that and lo and behold we got our cover off all right and then there inside there as you can see is the mainspring okay so now we're back at the mainspring winder um, I did leave the vise here for now because there's one more thing we're going to use it for at the very end of doing this okay so now we got to get this spring out of here so the next thing we have to pay attention to, there's usually a post that's inside of here. There's a pin through the barrel, but you can also look inside. All right, so you can see from the inside here, looking at the picture in front of you, that there's an angle in there on the very edge. That's the very end of the main spring. And then it catches on that pin that you can see just on the edge of the picture there. And then that's what holds the mainspring in place. And then in the center, you have your arbor, which is very similar to your old style mainspring arbor that you would see on the American style clock movements. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and get this sucker out of here. Now to do that, there's um, again, a few ways to do this. I prefer a direct approach but you can do it however you choose. One way to do this is to use a hose clamp around the main spring. You tighten that sucker on there as much as you can get it without, you know, uh, ripping the threads out of it. And then you'll use this thing and it'll fit like where the end of the screw is on there. And then it'll grip the spring and hold it in place for you. Well, that takes too much time for me. It's, it's kind of however you want to do it. You always want to try to use a key that best matches the arbor. If it's too loose, you could mess up the edges, and if it's too tight, well, it probably won't go on. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to wind it up. Wait a second, I actually have this backwards. All right, so you, I uh, have this in here intentionally so that this end is flush and this end sticks out a little bit. Now, there's a reason for that. Okay, so now we're on the back side of the spring and the barrel. So what we need to do is we need to capture the spring and we're gonna pull it out. All right, so now let's get this out of here. I've done too much talking. So now what I need to do is I need to find the correct one of these guys, which is the same general idea as one of those C bars you saw before, but this one is very specific. Let me see if I can figure out which size it is. That one. It's a little small. That next one up is too big. You want to make sure that there's plenty of room. This one will work. Now that we have this part picked out, 
we're going to put it on here, the longer end, and we're going to put the tailstock back on. Get that in there, tighten it down. Okay. And again, we don't want it too terrible tight like I just made it. There we go. Or too loose like I just made it. So now we need to capture the spring. The best way to do that is to grab a hold of the barrel with your hand. Not your bare hand, because you could get hurt. I should be using gloves, but this will work for the demonstration. So we need to wind the spring in this direction, so towards me again. But it's not going to do anything unless we hold on to this, okay? Now, what I like to do is I like to get the pin so that it's on the top, so that way I know where it is. Now. I'm going to grab a hold of the barrel. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to wind it up. You can see the spring kind of jumping around a little bit in there. Okay. Now, if you look in there, you'll see the end of the spring there. Okay. The end of the spring is what we need to leave sticking out. Okay, now there's not a whole lot of pressure here. Either the spring is really weak or it's just really weak. But it's really, it really doesn't take a whole lot of pressure to hold one of these springs. They're powerful only in that they store up potential energy. As soon as you release it, it becomes kinetic energy. Kinetic energy in springs and things flying around is not good. So anyway, now what we're going to do is we got to capture this spring. We're going to take this and we're gonna use this cutout part to go around where the end is. We want it to fit between there, and then I like to turn it in to the spring, so turning it into the wind. That way, there's plenty of tail sticking out, and you'll see why in a minute. So now we're gonna go ahead and release the tension inside of this capture clamp here, okay? Oop. Okay, that's pretty good. Kind of got away from me for a second there. I thought it was more loose than what it was, but that's okay. That's why we have this. It helps protect you and also wearing a glove or in this case, using a paper towel. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to take this and we're gonna twist it. So we're gonna go the opposite direction. Okay, hopefully. This one's really caught in there actually. This may be a bad a bad spring altogether to use for this. Yeah, I think this one's not a good one to use here. Either that or the spring's broke. No, it's not broke. So we're gonna have to do some kind of surgery here, I think, to get that out. This is a very weird mainspring. I think this one was cut. I think somebody cut this one. This was a bad one. This is one of those instances where you basically have to wrestle with it. It looks like somebody cut the spring because normally the end of the spring has a little bit of a roundness to it. This one is nice and straight, which tells me that somebody cut it and probably made their own new hole for the capture pin to go into. And I don't think that's going to come out of there easily. Let me go ahead and see if I can kind of wrestle this loose, though, just for the sake of trying. Um, this is an interesting scenario. And I noticed these grind marks here on the edge where that pin is supposed to be. This is a really weird situation. It looks like somebody cut the spring and drilled a hole into this part and actually just riveted it. That's really bizarre. I've never seen that before. So this spring can't even come out of here unless it's cut out. That's fantastic. All right, so I'm gonna get a different spring and we're gonna try this again, okay? Okay, everybody, so I got a new uh, spring here, or rather a different one. This one I confirmed has not been altered like the other one, that was truly bizarre. So let's go ahead and take this one out. Get that lined up there. All right, remember, use our glove. And then when I hold this, I'm intentionally pushing it that way a little bit so it stays bottomed out on the arbor, okay? So that way it doesn't come off this way or something. Give it a turn into the coil, flip this around, and release tension. Okay, there. 
Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and take this off of here. Yeah, this one looks right so far. So now the way it should work is you give it a twist in the opposite direction. Yeah, this is working perfectly. Okay. Alright, and then we're just going to pull it straight out. I usually grab a hold of the tail there, and there we go. We have the arbor included, like that. Now the next question is, how do you get the spring out of here? Well, that's actually a lot easier than you think it is. So these here are very, very important. See how you have this hole here? Hole end mainspring. That's why they call it a hole end mainspring. What I usually do is I give this a little bit of a bend out, kind of straighten it like that. You can give it a little extra, won't hurt it. Kind of like this. Now what we're gonna do is I have to flip this around and I'll show you why. So in theory, it'll be in there like this. Now we want the hook here to grab through here. But when you hold it like this, it has a tendency to wanna push out the other way like that. So what I like to do is turn it so the hook is facing the back, and that way it's pulling across the center, see, like this. So it has much more angle to grab. So we'll put this back on. <clears throat> Sorry for the interruption there. There's gonna be more going off here in a second. So bear with me. All you wanna do is make sure that the hook stays in the hole. So I'll just kinda of give it a little bit of pressure this way. Make sure it's got some little tension there. We'll go ahead and put this back. That way it stays nice and aligned and straight. Go ahead and wind it up. Okay. And now, slide that off of there. Flip it around, let the tension off, like this. Now sometimes the spring will want to do something weird, and I'm always kind of watching out for it. Okay, it didn't do it, but I'll force it to anyway, where it'll actually want to like twist and do this kind of a thing. But this one seems to be behaving for the most part, which is cool. But either way, I still like to kind of hold on to it as I'm unwinding it to keep it nice and straight. The spring is now fully unwound. I'll go ahead and remove this, at least put it on the end for now. Now, again, to get the spring off of the arbor, you can go backwards, or in this case, you can just pull it off. This one happened to work rather easily. That's perfectly fine. See, just like that, it just pops right out. Okay, so now we're gonna clean this and then we're gonna lubricate it and then we're gonna put it back in the barrel. So let's go ahead and get this clean. I'm gonna go ahead and use this paper towel that I was using before. This spring may or may not have been removed from this barrel before because it's marked with a C and so is the barrel. So this, it, it's very possible that this spring's been taken out of here before. So anyway, to clean it, I'm just gonna run it through here like this. and just keep kind of going around and around and around. You can use whatever way seems to work best for you. Then you wanna, you can even pull that through like this and then just kind of swish it around like that. You don't have to go all the way to the middle, but that's even fine. If you stop at like the third or the fourth wind in there, you're fine. So, we now have a clean mainspring. Now, to lubricate it, we're gonna use this stuff. So it's called Keystone Mainspring Lubricant. Um, this happens to be the light variant. Light is all you'll ever need. So what I use is just an old sock. And then I put about about a dime sized blob on there. Okay. Now we're going to start from the end. Alright. And it's going to, you kind of want to spread it across there a little bit. And then you're going to fold it like 
this and then just kind of work the spring around again the same way you do when you clean it okay because you don't need a lot of this mainspring lubricant you really don't but you should put it on both sides of the spring you know as in the inside and the outside and then just go around and around until you get down to where you just can't seem to go anymore But just take your time, work it around. And what's nice about this stuff is it, it leaves a nice light film of the stuff on there because you really don't need a lot. Then you get down toward the middle and then you can't seem to quite get much more in there. So then what you can do is take a tiny bit, just a little drop, like, right, like that down in those inner windings. I like to do both sides like, like that. So now I need to figure out which way that this wound. I do believe it was in there this way, right? Yes, it was. So the first thing we need to do is we need to fix the middle so it's more rounded. So we're gonna grab a hold of this end and we're just going to twist it in like this move up a little further, give it another good twist. You do this a few times until you get it about the right shape, the right size. Try to get that to where the arbor will fit nice and snug in there so nothing slips. But as long as you can get the arbor to fit snug and it'll be able to grip on the inside where there's another hole, okay? It's actually pretty important about this particular point here. You really want to try to make that fit in there as best that you can. Okay, it's got grip. That's good. Okay. So now we're going to put that back through. And I like to kind of start the winding a little bit by hand like this, just so it has tension on it when I go to put it in the, uh, the actual winder here. Okay, now we need this, and then we need this guy again. Get this lined up. Hopefully, it will grip. Right there. Okay. yourself back away from it a little bit. You can kind of use the side of your finger a little bit here. Or just hold it like that. Alright, so when you put this back on, don't put it past the bottom. Because we need enough room for the spring to go all the way inside the barrel. Okay. So now... And we're going to let that off and then always make sure that you turn it into the wind a little bit on the spring okay now we're going to let off the tension all right turning it into the wind and not quite all the way leave it back about a sixteenth of an inch or so okay you'll feel the tension stop and there you go okay so now one of the last steps we can take this out of here. The arbor is still a tad loose, but that's okay. Let me see if I can actually get that just a little bit tighter in there. Make that coil a little small. Okay, I think that'll work. Now we're going to put it back in the barrel. So here's our end. We're going to push that down, and then you'll see here we have our pin inside of the barrel. Remember we talked about that before? You want to make sure that this is ahead of this. So like right about where this slot is, is where I'm going to put that. You can try to line it up perfect if you want to. Um, I'm going to put it just in front here. I see the arbor decided it wanted to run away. Okay, then just kind of push that down in there. 
grab the arbor. All right, and then the arbor sticks out this end like this. You gotta make sure you get the arbor all the way through though. There we go, that helps. Now we're gonna put it back in here. And then back to our paper towel glove. Okay, now we gotta wind it back toward us again, just like this. Wind it up to where it's just about all the way. And you might have to spin that a little bit to pull it out, like that, okay? This is pretty much the exact opposite of what we did to get it out. And then let the tension off. Again, making sure you're pushing it that way. So that way it holds nice and tight. And now, ladies and gents, we have our mainspring back in the barrel. Now, we're just going to make sure it's all the way seated in there. Now we need to put this back on. Now, I did fail to mark this one uh, where that notch is, but that's okay. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of get one end kind of started in here if we can. And give it a little extra push because I know that spring was trying to kind of... It needs to go down in a little bit further. That's why you push into the barrel. Okay, so you kind of get it started a little bit. Now it's not going to snap in with your fingers. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use this. Okay, now we're back to the vise. So now let's get this out of the way. We're going to open this up. And this is how we do it at the clock shop. It's going to open that up to where this fits in there. Kind of hold the end here that you've already got started. And then just kind of lightly tighten a little bit here and there. You might have to work your way around. I found that that works too. There we go. Now we'll go one more little turn here. There. There we go. Okay. Now, you want to check end shake, which is basically um, your end shake is the back and forward motion of your arbor inside. So you want to check your end shake. You want to make sure that there's space in there for it to move. That's important. Um, I would say this is actually all the way in there. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and use a little extra insurance here. Just use this little hammer here. And then we'll just kind of give it a couple little taps in various places. Just to kind of make sure. Don't want to use the hammer directly. Perfect amount of end shake. This is good. This is ready to go. Okay, we've got the mainspring back inside of the movement. Don't pay any attention to how dirty this is. This is a parts movement. Um, therefore, it has real no any real value. Um, that's where the spring came from. Um, that also explains why this hunk of junk was in there to begin with. It also explains why it didn't run properly, too. So now the moment of truth, is it going to wind? Feels good. Tension setting in. Okay. It's holding true so far. Now we'll go ahead and use the actual key. When you're up all the way, and then while we're doing that, that's also getting some of that mainspring lubricant in there. There, it's wound up all the way. Good to go. All right, so we know that this spring is good. We know the movement is no good. <laughs> um, these movements, whole other story. Some of you probably have seen these. They're fun, aren't they? Um, I actually just completed a repair on one very similar, exact same movement. This is my parts movement. I did have to take a couple parts off of it to fix this one. Um, but I'll say one thing, when it goes off, it does have a very pretty chime. This is one of the New Havens. Um, I will actually do a video on that one whenever I get this one dialed in. Um, but for now, I'll go ahead and play the chime for you.
And with that, it's time to end the video. So, everybody, the mainsprings. You never want to mess around with the mainsprings. This is just a disclaimer. It me what I mean is mess around with them, but not too much. You want to be very careful when you're dealing with mainsprings. They really do have a lot of stored up energy. And when that energy is released immediately, it's multiplied exponentially. So you have one of those mainsprings and it comes loose or you just hold on to it. You can actually hold that spring close with your hand. If you were able to get the spring inside of your thumb and forefinger, you can hold it closed. But as soon as you open it up, that's when you're going to get hurt. Never, ever, ever want to mess around or take too many liberties or shortcuts with mainsprings. You can get hurt. I've seen people that have taken bits of their finger off with mainsprings just snapping or coming loose or whatever. So that's like when I was using the mainspring winder a little bit ago, you couldn't really tell what I was doing. But when I was turning this handle and it was open, just the one spring was open, I was leaning way out here. Except for where I had my hand up there to just hold it, it's always a good idea to wear a glove. I I'm fairly confident that it wasn't going to snap. It didn't this time. But nine times out of ten, they're not going to snap when you have them in the main spring winder. They're going to happen when they're under a lot of stress, a lot of load from daily use. That spring to me looked like it was totally fine, so I knew it wasn't going to snap. Unless, of course, I put way, way, way too much tension on it because with the handle, you have extra leverage. So it makes it easier to use the machine, but it's also easier to over or rather underestimate the spring. So you still want to take care and not over tighten the spring because it can snap. And you just want to be very careful with that. That's why these are important. Like yes, anybody who, you know, may have been doing this for 20, 30 years, yeah, like 30 years, they could just reach up, grab the spring, and just pull it off and then let it unwind very carefully in their hand. I've seen people do it. I don't recommend it. Um, the shop that I'm currently employed at, they were using their own homemade uh, mainspring winders. I didn't like them. To me, they were dangerous, and I ended up taking mine in. But I actually took it in, and I made it, uh, gave a demonstration of how it works. And they were like, we love it. We're going to order one right away. So that's in the works now. So they're going to have an Aldi Baker mainspring winder. Looks like I'm running out of space on my camera, which is interesting, but <laughs> I hope everybody here uh, who's watching has a really great day. Be careful with these mainsprings. They are dangerous, okay? I can't say that enough, all right? If you have any questions, post some comments below. Let me know what you think of the video. Like and subscribe. Have a great day. Take care.